Now we have seen that it's pretty straightforward to create a pivot table. You just take your data, click into it, go to insert and choose pivot table and Excel spots the data and then you're away. However, sometimes if your data is constantly changing or maybe there are some spaces within it, or maybe you just prefer this secondary method, I personally would always recommend naming your data range and then you can create your pivot table at any stage you like in any sheet you like. Here we are in our sales data. To name the range of data, I will firstly would need to highlight it all. Click anywhere into the data and control A will usually suffice. Quick check to make sure. So it's gone right to the bottom, 818 rows, and it's right to the top, including the column headings. So I know it's got the right data source. Click into the name box and then give my data a sensible name. Now there is nothing more sensible than calling it data. Don't forget the return so that it accepts your name. You can always check that that's gone in by going to Formula Name Manager and checking that we have data in there and it's covering the correct range. It's also in here that you could come in and manually adjust the range so that a different set of data is being fed into wherever you're using it. At the moment, we're not using it. Now that we have a named range, creating a new pivot table using that named range is pretty easy. We go to the sheet that we want to put the information in. So I'm going to sheet one. I'm even going to rename that sheet as summary. Place my cursor where I might like the pivot table to start. Insert pivot table. Now I don't go and highlight anything. It hasn't highlighted anything because there's nothing on this sheet. I simply go here where it says table slash range and type equals data. I don't want to go in the new worksheet this time. I want to go into the existing worksheet, which is here. And it's going to start A3 because that's where my cursor is. Fantastic. OK, there my pivot table structure appears, which effectively is just a rectangle that says to build a report, choose the fields from the right. The pivot table fields then appear on the right and I can see my column headings. I'm free to go. If I were to choose the country and place that in rows and then the quantity, place that in values, it adds up how many items have been sold to each country. Now, one thing we also wanted to explore here, as well as the fact that naming the range is going to save you time, effort, and long-term maintenance of your pivot tables, is the fact that the column headings appear like this, row labels. And if I were to put the date here, we get column labels. So that's not ideal. So instead of row labels and column labels, and even sum of quantity, I can actually just click into these cells and change what appears there. Where it says row labels, that's actually the country where it says column labels, so that's actually the year. And sum of quantity is the data within here. I'm just going to call that QTY, QTY items. Now I can narrow this up because the word year is much shorter than column name. And I have a much more sensible pivot table. We start in a new sheet. We go to insert pivot table. We use our named range by saying equals data. Tell it where to start which is where the cursor is placed. That's fine if you're happy there, okay. And then select your columns. I could perhaps go for quarters here and sum of sales within each quarter, but then place the years as the column headings. Now I have sum of sales for each quarter within each year and the column labels and row labels need changing to year, QTR, sum of sales. I'm just gonna change that to sales dollar. Narrow up this column. And we've got ourselves a pretty pivot table. Don't forget when you click away from the pivot table, pivot table field list will disappear because you're not within the pivot table. One click in and it comes back again. So it's a context sensitive, just like the ribbons at the top, really. So you click out, the ribbon at the top disappears and the field list disappears. Click back in, the ribbon at the top appears and the field list appears on the right. Making use of a named range for the data that feeds your pivot table will help you manage the pivot table much easier and if you're using the pivot table over and over again it's then quicker to then just create a new sheet equals the name of the range and then you're away with your pivot table